Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here and welcome to the Hackintosh Pro Project Part 4. Let's go! So this video is number four in the series, and in case you missed it, there are the first three parts. In the last video, we took basically a screwdriver and turned a whole bunch of parts into an actual computer. So in this video, we're basically gonna go over the surprisingly simple steps in order to create a Hackintosh Pro out of the computer we just made. So there's already a pretty general outline out there for installing Mac OS X on non-Apple hardware. So the links below this video, right below the like button on this video, are pure gold. This is probably the most important link heavy description you will see on an MKBHD video. Tony Mac x86 is probably the most important one. That is sort of the renowned or well-known hub of all things Hackintosh. And that is where you will find written instructions, parts lists, compatibility, tips, tricks, all sorts of things related to Hackintosh customization and build tips. So if you have any questions about Hackintosh, Definitely feel free to check out their forums, check out, you know, if you Google something about a Hackintosh, the first link is probably gonna be a TonyMacX86.com link. So TonyMacX86 is a great resource. And one particular link in the description below will be pretty much the written instructions for everything I'm about to describe to you that makes this Hackintosh Pro different from other Hackintoshes. So for the skeleton of this process, there are only two things you really actually need to get this done once you've built your Hackintosh. Number one is a computer that's already running some version of Mac OS X. You need to have access to the App Store on that computer so that you can download Mac OS X Mountain Lion. And number two is one of these guys. This is a flash drive. You're gonna need a flash drive, a USB flash drive of eight gigabytes or larger. And this is going to be your install drive. This is gonna be the magical little key that lets you install Mac OS X on your new computer at the Hackintosh. So to start with the Hackintosh build, you're gonna need to prepare this USB key. And in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and head into number one, the actual Mac and go into disk utility and basically format this completely. So you're gonna have to erase it. You're going to use GUID partition into one hard drive. You can name it whatever you want and uh, basically just format it to erase it clean. Then you're gonna use a piece of software that is also linked down below the like button on this video called Unibeast. And Unibeast is going to be basically what makes this your installer drive. You're gonna use Unibeast to look at your copy of Mac OS X Mountain Lion and install it onto your flash drive. It'll take a few minutes, but basically when Unibeast is done, your USB key is now the magic key. That's now the installer. So now that this is bootable, when your Hackintosh is done being built, plug it into one of the USB 2 ports and boot her up and cross your fingers because if you built everything correctly, hopefully nothing blows up or explodes and hold down whatever key gets you into your motherboard's BIOS. So for my board, it got me into UEFI by pressing the delete key. So for some other more motherboards, it's the F12 key or F4 or something. Whatever your motherboard says to get into your BIOS, hold that down. And what you want to do is boot for the first time into that USB drive. When you boot into it, hopefully you'll get into the Mac OS X installer. This is when you format your SSDs, which is what I have in my build. You format one of your SSDs and install Mountain Lion on that. Now, you'll be done booting and you will actually get into Mac OS X with the USB key still plugged in, but you are not done. It's definitely not done yet. The second piece of software you'll need is called MultiBeast. And if you don't have it on that computer, you probably won't obviously, you can use another flash drive to download it and then install it by plugging it into the new Hackintosh. Basically, MultiBeast is just gonna give you your, your bootloaders, your drivers, your basically everything that you need to get everything working without your magic key. So right now you can only boot with the magic key. You use MultiBeast, you have to take a certain number of settings and I will have my settings right here. So if you guys wanna see which ones that I used, uh, that was just for my specific set of parts. It is different for every single set of parts but it mostly depends on your motherboard and your graphics. Those sort of combinations, uh, well check marks, will determine what you tick. So once you tick what you need in MultiBeast, you will install MultiBeast on your new SSD with Hackintosh, and then you'll be done. So then you can restart, unplug your magic key, and you'll be able to reboot into Mac OS X. And I guess then at that point, you are officially on a Hackintosh. I would probably rate my steps about a five out of 10 for difficulty. Um, some things, I probably rebooted mine about 40 times to get the, the kernel flags exactly right and get exactly what I needed to, for it to boot without me having to interrupt. So now when I turn on my Hackintosh, I press the power button and it boots all the way up and I don't have to press anything. So you're gonna have to get to uh, adjust and fiddle with your settings. But again, the Tony Mac x86 forums are brilliant for finding the exact settings you need for your combination of parts. But that's basically what I did and the kernel flags ended up working perfectly and now I can boot and it's just working. Now there are two empty SSDs still on this Hackintosh. Remember we installed three SSDs in there. We only installed Mac OS X on one of them. 
This is because we have the other two SSDs for our RAID 0 array. So I again used the set of written instructions down below, right below this video, and that is what allowed me to set up basically cloning that brand new fresh OS X install and stripe it across a RAID 0 array on the other two SSDs. And this is what's gonna give you blazing fast read speeds, blazing fast write speeds, insanely snappy performance. I already noticed a difference between my Mac Pro and the Hackintosh Pro, but that's the next video, so make sure you guys are ready for that. But basically, it's going to give you insanely fast speeds, and especially for video editing, when you're working with video, which is really large files live, you're gonna be able to want to work in a RAID array, and that's gonna give you a much better performance. First thing I installed, though, was Google Chrome. I literally, as soon as I got into the RAID 0 array for the first time, I went into Safari and went to google.com slash chrome, and then started working from there. So after I installed that, I installed NVIDIA's CUDA drivers. And basically what these allow you to do is use the insanely powerful processing cores on the graphics card, the GTX 670 overclocked edition that I have in this build to offset some of the tasks that Adobe Premiere and After Effects love so much. So the Adobe programs will look at those 1,344 CUDA cores on that graphics card and be able to offset a ton of those tasks onto uh, the graphics card from the CPU. So the six core CPU won't have to work as hard, even though it's still a workhorse and a beast of a CPU. And then all these things will be working really quickly through the 32 gigs of RAM and the CUDA cores on the graphics card. Those instructions to enabling CUDA are also in the links below. I'm telling you, this is golden down there, golden, right below the like button. But basically once you get everything set, once you've gotten all of the flags and ticked all the right things and made all the right settings adjustments, you will have a perfectly functioning Mac without anything lesser than. In fact, you'll have a lot more than a regular Mac will. Now, a lot of people keep asking me, you know, why would you do this? Why would you install Mac OS X on such high-end hardware? Well, to be honest, well, number one, I'm not a gamer. I've said that about a trillion times. But number two, um, I've gotten used to the Mac OS X environment, but I'm not gonna go into it now. Expect a full video comparing a Mac Pro to a Hack Pro. And this is what's going to be, uh, I guess, the finale of the series. I'm gonna go ahead and show what this machine is capable of, what it can do, how powerful it is, how much faster it is, uh, your bang for your buck, how much you've paid for all the parts. I'll have all the parts links also down below the more important links in the description, but essentially you're getting a lot more for your money. But I'm not even gonna talk about it now. I'm just gonna save it for part five. That's gonna be the last video in the series and it's probably gonna be an insanely long video too, but thumbs up if you're ready for that. That is basically what we're waiting for. Uh, to wrap up this Hackintosh Pro series, and that's what's gonna be it. That's what's gonna make this my daily driver. I wanna give a shout out to Yomang who wrote the very detailed written instructions that I have linked below. And I also wanna give a shout out to Rob from CPU Kid. His links will be below. He took a lot of time out of his day to help me also get these ticks correct and help me uh, get the correct kernel flags to boot without having to interrupt. So now that everything works, I can thank those two sources quite a bit uh, for their help. But that's basically it, guys. Thank you for watching this extremely skeleton-like video, not very detailed, but again, those links below are pure gold. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys in part five, and I'll uh, see you later. Peace.